and welcome. Today I'm starting a new sewing project. Now I've not done any actual dressmaking for many years. I found it not cost effective to even bother. You can buy clothes so cheaply here in the UK. It costs more to purchase the fabric to make an item than it does to buy the completed garment of clothing. And having bought the fabric, you still need cotton and buttons and zips and whatever extras that particular piece of clothing might require. I've done lots of alterations. I've turned dresses into skirts, pulled in side seams, adjusted hem lengths, but complete garment sewing I've not done for years. But recently I've been feeling incentivized and want to make some new summer dresses completely from scratch. With that in mind, when I was Shopping at the supermarket yesterday, I spotted this beautiful fabric and thought, oh, I want to make a summer dress out of that. It's gorgeous. This is actually sold as a quilt cover set. So there's a quilt cover and two pillowcases to fit a double bed inside this package. So having seen this beautiful fabric, which actually there are two different patterns. One side of the quilt is this pattern and the reverse of the quilt is going to be this slightly more simple pattern. So I'm at the moment, I'm thinking beautiful summer dress with this one and maybe a skirt or a blouse with this reverse fabric. Having spotted this and decided I'm having that, I walked along the aisles of bedspreads to see if anything else caught my eye, and it did. This one also caught my attention. I thought this would make a lovely summery blouse. Again, maybe a skirt, a waistcoat. I don't know, just really nice fabric that I hope to make something gorgeous out of. Now hats off to Tesco's, the packaging on these two items is absolutely brilliant. Usually something like this would be tightly wrapped in cellophane plastic. But these are not, they've actually packaged the finished product in these little fabric bags made from the fabric that is the quilt cover inside. Oh, I forgot this. This one also has a reverse pattern. So we have these, oh, if I can move the cardboard off, there we go. This big leopard on the front. I don't know, I'll play with this one. Not entirely sure where I might go with this fabric. This is the reason I chose to purchase it. The prices were very good as well. These are both for a double bed. This one was very cheap at £14 and my blue one was slightly more expensive at £26. But I've got two sheets of double bed size fabric out of this one for my £26. It's 100% cotton. And this one's a cotton polyester. I suspect the polyester is the reason it's cheaper and it's maybe a flat a slightly thinner weave because the packaging's a little bit smaller. Not much though. So they're my two starter fabrics. But before I sew anything, I need to unpackage these and put them through the washing machine just to make sure any fabric shrinkage happens now before I make it into something and any colour run or bleed shows up and I know what I'm dealing with. So let's get these opened. Unboxing! <laughs> Unpackaging. So say the packaging is brilliant. Cardboard, fully recyclable. Let's get both of those off. There we go. Oh, that slid off nicely. And these are really nice, these little fabric bags. I don't know how easy it's going to be to get them out of here though. It's very tightly packaged. Oh my goodness. There we go. It won't be going back in here again, that's for sure. These little bags are lovely. I 
got this lovely little cloth bag for storing things in. Could put a strap on it. I don't know. It's just really nice. It's really nice, ready-made little cloth bag. And even if I don't use it as a bag, it's another piece of fabric. It's certainly big enough to make a pocket out of. Ooh, lots of tigers. They're not tigers, leopards. Oh, pillowcase. Whoa. Yay! So two pillowcases. I'm gonna stand up for this. <laughs> oh, he's covered. And a huge piece of fabric. enough to make some clothes out of. Two pieces of clothes. The back and the front. And the first one that caught my attention. You can feel the weight difference. This is heavier, slightly thicker. Upside down, my insects are flying the wrong way. Turn it around. Be aware of that when I'm cutting out my pattern. Need to make sure my butterflies are flying the right way up, not upside down. decided exactly what I want to make from these pieces of fabric. So bye for now and I'll see you when I get to that stage. Well here's my first item already decided. It's not clothing at all. I've used one of the pillowcases. Actually I'm going to use both of them and make some cushion covers to go on these blue chairs. They actually go perfectly in this room. And I really love it. This leopard's in just the right spot. Hello and welcome back. Here we are, a week later. I've washed and dried these bedspreads and unpicked the seams to give me this wonderful array of beautiful fabrics to play with. Now it's not necessary to unpick the seams. If I knew exactly what I was going to make them into, I could just lay my pattern pieces on top and cut them out. But as I'm not exactly sure what each piece of fabric is going to become, I decided I would spend the extra bit of time cutting out the seams to give me the maximum fabric and plenty of flexibility of choices as to what I might choose to do with it. I've decided I'm going to start with this fabric. I'm going to make it into a long flowy summer dress. I already have a couple dresses in this style in my wardrobe. I have this ruched elastic -y top and a long flowy skirt and I wear them lots. They're a quick easy choice on a hot summer day, nice and cool to wear and I love them and use them lots. So I'm going to use this fabric and make myself another one. It's actually got there. If I come up close, we've got a nice factory finished seam that was the bottom of the quilt cover. It had a row of buttons on it to close the quilt together. So I'm going to use this factory seam as the top area of the dress, which will give me a nice straight edge to work against and hopefully a beautifully finished seam at the top of my garment. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is put the width of this fabric, all of it, through the sewing machine, which I've set up with a shearing elastic in the bottom bobbin and a white cotton on the top. I don't know how many rows of shearing I'm going to do, so I'll compare it with the dresses I've already have. I'll hold it up against myself and see how it looks and feels and play it by ear. So that's my first task, run this big length of fabric through the machine several times with shearing elastic. Once it's all springy and elasticy, I'll join the two outside edges of fabric together to give me a seam which will be down the back of my finished garment. Cut off the excess at the bottom which will give me lots of fabric left to make some straps. So here we are at the machine. I've actually set my bobbin up underneath, has got shearing elastic on it, nice and stretchy. And I've set the top of my machine up just with a normal white cotton. And as I said, I'm going to start with this top factory seam. I've also got a piece of half inch elastic that I think I may like to put into this seam. I'll thread it through in here, all the way along the top, which will give me a nice, flat, comfortable fit against my chest with a finished dress. But I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm going to use that yet. So with my first couple rows of elastic, I'm going to start just underneath the stitch line for this seam. So I'll set my foot up on that seam and I can follow this stitch line with my needle set to the right. So here goes. I don't know how much you'll be able to see and how much my hands are in the way. Needle in and we're off. Oh, nice and slow to start with. There we go. Quick jump and here we are at the end. With a shearing elastic when you get to the end of your piece of work you want to pull it out a lot further than you normally would gently relax it and I'm actually going to then give this another tug just so I've got plenty of elastic nice and relaxed out of the machine then I can cut it off a bit on the end of my sewing work oh cut the cotton as well and a decent tail coming out of the machine Want a little bit longer than you normally would because this is all stretchy and springy and you don't want it to spring back into the machine mechanism when you start your next row of stitching. There, first springy row done. It doesn't seem very springy yet but once we've done row upon row upon row you'll be surprised how elasticated it becomes. Next row, so I'm going to put my foot back, my needle, to the left of my foot now and I can follow my last line of white stitching should give me a reasonable gap. Now the first row was nice and easy. This is going to be a bit more fiddly because as I'm passing through the machine I need to be straightening, flattening this out ready for the machine to take it. So here goes. Just holding on to those threads when I start and take my needle in by hand with a gentle hand turn. Yes, the gapping looks good. Ah, 
and another quick jump to the end. Yay, the elastic just made it to the end. Literally, there's my last little piece. Perfect. <laughs> so now we're getting nice and scrunchy. Okay, I'm going to put you on pause while I stitch up another 10 rows of this and we'll see how we're looking then. Well, my bobbin ran out of shearing elastic just at the end of a row, which was perfect. So I'm going to thread some more elastic onto this. Now I already threaded some elastic onto a bobbin to show you, but I forgot to push record. It's okay to do it again. So in order to put your shearing elastic onto your bobbin, shearing elastic arrives on a spool, just like your cotton does. This is a stretchy elastic. So I'm going to put the end of my elastic. There are little holes in your bobbin. So you push your elastic from the middle of the bobbin out through one of those holes. So it's gone from this inside bit and then out here. So holding on to that little tail so it doesn't get pulled out. And then I'm going to gently wrap my shearing elastic around my bobbin. Now by gently, I mean I'm not pulling and stretching at the elastic. I'm just allowing it to be nice and relaxed, holding this too high. Allowing it to be nice and relaxed and I'm just winding it over the bobbin with no tension or pull at all. And we just keep winding it up until our bobbin's nice and full. I'm actually going to drop my shearing elastic spool down onto the floor, which will give me a nice good length of relaxed elastic to wind onto the bobbin. I'm just going to swap hands and go onto the other side so I can fill my spool up evenly all the way across. Now we've done quite a bit. I'm going to cut this little tail off that we first threaded into the bobbin and I'm going to cut it off really close. And cut it really tight and close to the side of the bobbin so it won't get tangled up under your machine when you're using it. And round we go, round and round and round, till your bobbin's nice and full. So once your bobbin's nice and full, cut off your elastic. And you can thread this into your machine exactly the same way you would a spool of cotton. And then you'll be ready to start shearing some more. So that's good. I've got a spare bobbin now, ready when this runs out. We're done. How many? One, two, three, four, five, five. I've just started row six. So I'll see you back when I've done a bit more. It's getting nice and stretchy. Nice and springy and stretchy, just like I want it to be. Now I'm actually getting deeper into the project. It's getting a little harder to do because I need to pull the stretch out of the fabric so it can lay nice and flat on the machine. But as I'm sewing, I need to let the speed of the machine guide how quickly the fabric goes through. You shouldn't pull it out the back. Let the machine guide how fast it goes through. So I'm holding onto the fabric at the back behind the foot and at the front and pulling it apart so it's nice and flat. And then allowing that to guide through the machine at the speed the sewing machine wants to take it. And the more rows you do, the stretchier and springier it becomes. so far getting nice and stretchy 
I've done, I think, 12 rows of the shearing elastic. One's not really giving much stretch to anything though. I put a row in this top hemmed area, which is two layers of fabric thick. And so it's not quite got the same springy effect going up the, on up there. I will put that wider half inch elastic I've got. I'll thread that through the top to give me a nice even hem and a nice comfy snug fit across the top of the bust. But it's looking good. It's coming along quite nicely. I think actually my fabric's going to be a bit wider than I need. So even when I take it back, oof, there. Even when I hem up this back edge, it's still going to be wider than me, I think. See how the rest of the elastication goes. I'd like to keep as much swoosh and flow in the skirt as I can. So the less fabric I have to cut away from this edge, the swooshier my skirt can be. But I also need it to fit nice and snug around the bust. So maybe my elastication could do with being tighter, but it's good. For a first try and after many years of not sewing, I'm very pleased. I'm loving the fabric. It's so gorgeous and soft. But who wouldn't want to wear their bed all day? Lovely. Let's go and do some more. I think at least another 10 or 12 rows. Well, things are going very nicely. I've now done 21 rows of shearing elastic in this fabric. And it's got nice and springy. I was a little nervous at the beginning. It wouldn't be springy enough and I would have to be cutting off excess fabric at the sides, which would lose some of the swoosh in the skirt. I've also added that half inch wide elastic at the top in that factory seam, which has worked really nicely to make the top nice and secure and tight. Not that it wasn't, but I like that. It's given me a nice neat finish at the top. So this is now fitting me and gather it together there we go you can see and I can't but there we are so there'll be a seam right down the back but when that's all seamed up it fits me very nicely and I'm very happy with that I've also cut a strip of fabric off the bottom that was longer than needed so now I can use this piece to make some shoulder straps to go over the go over my shoulders. So they're my next two jobs. Stitch up that back seam, gather it together, there we go. I'm standing on it, there. Sew up the back seam and make some straps for the shoulders. Now with this back seam, I plan to stitch it wrong side to wrong side first. And then I'm going to turn the whole dress inside out and sew along it again that will seal in that raw edge and mean I've got no exposed fraying areas. Give me a nice tidy finish. And with the shoulder straps, I'm going to cut a strip of my now spare fabric and fold it in on itself to create a tube. Then I'll, once that's been stitched, I'll stitch that inside out to start with. So actually I will create a tube, <laughs> do that again. There we go. Make a tube, stitch along the tube, turn that inside out, and then I'll have some straps to go over the shoulder of my dress. Now with the straps, I've got some scraps in my sewing box. So I'm going to see if I can find some thicker, heavier fabric in there that I can put inside this sleeve strap and stitch that in as well to give this a bit more structure and rigidity. So when I'm wearing it, it won't all scrumple up into a fine little strip of a strap. I can get a decent bit of width going on. So that's the next job. Seam down the back and make some straps. And that's it, we'll be pretty much finished stitch up the hem. Wonderful. It's looking good. I'm really pleased. It looks gorgeous. 
So we'll see you, I think, when it's all finished. So here's that seam I was describing that goes all the way along the back of the dress. We've just got this little flap of fabric on the inside. It's all smooth and neatly tucked in, no rough frayed edges exposed. And that runs all the way the full length of the dress, even up here in the elastic work. I don't know how well the camera can pick it up. There it is, this flappy edge seam. So at the very top, if I can get my arm out, at the very top here, there you go, you can see it, with all the elastic work, it gets quite thick and bulky. So I'm just going to put a little hand stitch. How can I show it? There, this flappy bit. I'm going to put a little tiny stitch in this top edge to make sure it always stays lying flat in this direction. And when I hem the dress at the bottom, I'll make sure this seam follows that same line of flatness all the way down the dress and folds up into the hem facing that same direction. Lovely, neat and tidy. And of course, when we turn it the right way round, where's it gone? So neat, I can't find it. <laughs> there we go. So we turn it the right way round and here it is on the outside. Gives a lovely, tidy, neat finish. Can't see it at all in the elastic work. Disappears completely in all those ruffles. But even down the back of the dress, nice, neat, smooth seam. And I've also made some straps to go over the shoulders. I've made a tube out of the dress fabric, my quilt cover material. And inside that, I've put this thicker, stronger, where's the other end? There's more of it hanging out there. So I've got a thicker, stronger fabric inside to give it some stability. And then a tube of the dress fabric wrapped around that. I'm also going to run a line of stitching just along each edge to make sure that when the dress is being worn and going through the washing machine, this stays nice and smooth and flat and doesn't get all ruffled up. So I'm going to put the straps on and hem up the bottom and I'll be ready to go out in the sunshine. Finally, I'm all finished and it's looking lovely. But it's very late in the day. Don't let the speed of this video fool you. I've spent all day on and off working on this dress Yes, I've stopped for lunch and took the dog for a walk. So I've made my dress. I also made a little scrunchie for my hair to match. And I've still got fabric left over that was excess. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Make another cushion. I made two cushion covers and still have the rest of this leopard fabric to use up. So not bad for my 14 pounds, I think it was. Even 14.99, it's still very good value. Supposed to be another nice sunny day tomorrow. So I'll put the dress on and we'll go outside and take some pretty pictures. Just to finish off this video, now I don't know how long this video is going to be because I haven't edited it. Now although I've got lots more fabrics to make lots of wonderful things with, I'm not going to make them today and I'm not going to make them in this video. We'll save that for a future video. So bye for now and I'll see you next time. And remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it! Here's me in my new dress, in my normal environment, in the polytunnel, harvesting beautiful ripe tomatoes. Yay! There's so many on all sides of me. Where better to use your new dress and the garden picking more tomatoes? And as if there weren't enough tomatoes at home on a workshop, today we have even more. Wonderful.
So here we have the finished dress. It's lovely. I'm really pleased with it. Perfect for a hot summer's day. Oh, and nice and swishy and cool. Now I made this dress today as a long floor length dress because that's a style I frequently wear. But if long floor length dresses are not your style at all, you could still make this dress. Simply adjust the hem length to suit you. Now I made my dress as a full floor length dress because that's the kind of dress I frequently wear. But you may like something shorter. You could still make this dress using this stretchy shearing elastic top and the wide straps. Just make your hem the length that you prefer. You have a completely different looking dress. Also very nice. Now I've just tapped this up for the moment so it looks good in a photograph, but if you're happier with a shorter hem, have a go. Make this dress for yourself with a shorter hem. I like it like this too. It's also very nice. In fact, I like it so much I'm tempted to go and buy another bedspread so I can make a short version. But for now, I think I've got enough to be doing with my other three pieces of fabric. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. So bye for now and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it.